In general, there is also a question regarding speed. The maximum question I don't remember where was formulated in such a way that the larger the airship, the worse its aerodynamic properties. And there is a falsehood in that question. The larger the airship, the better its aerodynamic properties, firstly. And the larger the airship, the more energy it can carry, the faster it can accelerate. It was also mentioned about jet engines, fuel consumption and so on. The limit of 200 is by no means a limit, even for regular versions without jet engines, and if there is a tailwind. Most often, this is how it will happen, because with modern technologies we can see all the wind flows, where to ascend, where to turn, and so on. With a tailwind at high altitudes, airships can fly at 600, I will answer a bit more about near-Earth flight. It is clear that up there you can encounter wind and so on. But what about right here near the ground? The first-line airships that we are planning have a speed of up to 170 km per hour. Up to 120 for smaller devices, 150 for medium ones, and 170, 180 for the larger ones. And in fact, that is a decent speed. And this statement that modern airships fly at a maximum of 60 km per hour. Show me a modern airship to start with and then we will see how fast it flies. There are no modern airships except for the Germans. But they are also considered outdated. That's one. And two, the question of maximum speed is far from always being the most important question. To comfortably transport a large item such as an assembled wind turbine or power line and to solve a task that seems impossible, speed is not important. If the goal is to create connectivity between regions that have never been connected before, speed is not important. When addressing certain industrial or technical issues, again, speed is not the priority. Rather, cyclicality, predictability, and so on are what matter. The entire technological process is restructured around this. Even for personal travel, even at a speed of 60 km per hour, you must understand that the speed from point A to point B in a straight line is higher. Just Google the average speed of a car in the city, the average speed of a car when traveling from city to city, and the average speed of train travel. You will be surprised to find that the average speed there is up to 30 km per hour, or even less than 20. So in a straight line, even 60, which will actually be far from 60, will be 120 or more. It surpasses even automotive transport and trains and everything else you want, because it flies in a straight line and with good comfort, without overloads, without vibrations. The speeds are more than sufficient, the airships themselves provide. It is exactly and precisely this function of transitioning seamlessly from point A to point B in a straight line. Without roads, without corridors, without railway tracks, without airfields. They will only need speed to surpass everything that exists, and efficiently and effortlessly. Let's assume a situation. Now there will be a comparison with airplanes. Here you are transporting passengers. Now slower, or are you bringing some cargo? Slower. No. Faster. An airship can pick up cargo from the manufacturer and deliver it directly to the warehouse. But if we take the same airplane, first a truck arrives to load. It travels at an average speed of 20 km per hour to the nearest airfield then everything has to be reloaded and loaded onto the plane. It takes off, lands, and has to be unloaded again. Once again, onto the same truck, and the truck goes again, wherever it gets to. It's good that it's a truck, sometimes it's a train, and the sea takes a long time. So, most likely, the average speed of the airship will be sufficient and exceeds all the logistical solutions that currently exist. That's it. Thank you.